Hello and welcome to Tonic Studios. I'm Leo. I'm here today with Alison. Hello. And we're back with another Tonic tutorial for you where we bring you tips, techniques and tutorials. Today we're looking at making messy backgrounds with Nuvo products. As you can see, the aprons are on. So what does that mean? We're getting messy. We certainly are today. <laughs> we've got our pastes out, we've got sprays out, we've got a little bit of shimmer powder. So we've got lots to share with you. We have. So we're going to be looking today at making backgrounds using a wide variety of Nouveau products. So think backgrounds for your cards, obviously, but Absolutely. also for your memory books your scrapbook pages, yes. layers to go on your boxes and things like yeah. that. It's not just for card making. As always, if you have any questions as we're going along, pop them into the comments below and we will come back through and answer as many as we can for you. So but what have we got? Home decor. Home decor, of course, yes. Home Did decor. That one? Right, well, you often ask us what's the difference in our mousses. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would do some samples for you so you can see the difference. So I'm going to run through them all and show you. I've put them, I've applied them in two different ways. So I've applied them with a spatula, but I've also applied them with a sponge. And I'll show you at the end how I've done each one. Or not each one, but I'll show you applying yes. with a spatula and with a sponge. So the first one I've got here is a chalk mousse. So it's this one here, and the colour is, whoops. Herb Garden. It is. <laughs> and it's it's a bit of a sagey green, isn't it? it? Is. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. It's a beautiful colour. But can you see the different effects? So this one here, I've written on them all, so I know for later dates. Mm -hmm. This is applied with a spatula. This is applied with a sponge. So you get a, definitely get a lighter colour. But you get a suede effect with this and it's very touchy-feely. Mm -hmm. You can hear it under my fingers. So, so pretty, but nice to get the two different effects. And I'm sure you could try other things as well. Try like a natural sponge or um, even a kitchen sponge. You mm -hmm. know the ones that have got the scrubby pad on one side? Maybe try applying with that. So our chalk mousse has a, as the name would suggest, a slightly chalky finish. Absolutely. Kind of a matte finish to it. Yes. There's no shimmer or sheen in that at no. all, so it will give you more of a matte finish when it is dried, but it is a, it's quite a thick mousse It is as well, quite isn't thick. It? Let me pull that back. You can see I've used a lot of this one, <laughs> but that is what you want to do. The other thing is, is looking after your mousse. Try and keep the air out of these pots. I think a good idea would be to put some cling film yep. over the top and then, put, and the then put the lid on and then you're keeping the air out to them. Because they are all water based, so the longer you've got the pot open on mm -hmm. your desk, if the lid isn't on correctly, then you are going to lose water and they are going to dry out. But they can be rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. You can add to them deionized or sterile. Is that the word? Yes. Sterile water? Yeah. Um, Deionised water is available in supermarkets where all the car bits and bobs are. And it usually comes in about a litre jack, I would say. And that will last you for ages. Um, just keep adding. Add a little bit. Mix it. Add another bit. Mix it. And just keep going. You'll be surprised how much water you may need to add. Obviously, depending on how dry the mousse is. Mm -hmm. But we have rejuvenated a mousse that looks like it needs the bin. But you just keep going, keep it going slowly and you will get it back to normal. So the next one we've got here is our expanding mousse. So this is the expanding mousse I've used. As you can see, I love this colour. It's gorgeous. And the colour is Iced Aqua. So this one I've popped on with a spatula. This one I've put on with a sponge. 
Now you need to heat this to get it to expand and to puff. You need to heat it when it's wet. So don't put it to one side and come back to it because it doesn't work. You need it when it's wet. The more paste you've got on, the bigger the puff, obviously. You will lose that sheen on it when it puffs. So if you look at these two, you can still see the sheen on a lot of this one because obviously it is too thin and it dried out very quickly and it didn't puff. But around the edges of the stencil where it's going to be a little bit thicker, you will get parts of it to puff. If you want to bring the sheen back to the expanded one, you can just rub over lightly with a sponge or you pop a little bit out on your mat and put it on with your finger and the sheen can be applied back on it. So they're a lovely one. Then we have a glitter. Where's me of the glitter? What have I done with that? Ooh, have I not got another one? Yes. So this is our glimmer paste. What did I do with that? So we don't have the red one, do we? we I don't have the red <laughs> one. I used it all. Um, this was Ruby Ritz. Spectre Red. Oh, yeah, Spectre Red. Ruby Ritz is our drop, isn't it? Or is that a paper? Paper. Paper, is there? The I know there was a ruby written yeah. in something. The only thing I found with this, when you're applying with a sponge, it does tend to want to go under the stencil. Mm. So you can see in the middle here where it's gone under the stencil and it's a bit thicker. But what I would say there is, if you can cut an aperture, which I have got somewhere, bear with me. Oh, there your card's not mine. Where did I put mine? There it is. I've cut a nice little aperture, so you're obviously going to pick a part that is not so much. This one is going right across the centre, so what I would say then, I will pop my sentiment over the top, even though that's upside down. But there are ways that you can still use the backgrounds you've made, even if they're not perfect. Don't get rid of them. But this was put on with a sponge. This was put on with a spatula. So you've got a thicker application here. So you've obviously got more colour. You've got more shimmer. I would say, looking at these, like the glitter seems to lay flatter when it's put on with a sponge, so it's more of like a foiled effect, isn't yes. it? Yes. Whereas with this one, the glitter is more all over the place, so it's standing up at various yeah. different angles, isn't it? Yeah, you seem to get more more sheen, but scattered sheen with yes. this one, don't you? Yeah. And this is more of a foiling effect. I don't know whether it's coming across on camera. Hopefully yeah, it is. I think it is. So that was our glimmer paste. Then I moved on to the embellishment mousse. So this one is put on with a spatula. This is put on with a sponge. Now with this one, other than it being thicker, obviously, with the spatula, I didn't really see a lot of difference. Again, I can see on the camera that this is a bit of a darker colour. Mm. The sponge is a little bit lighter. But other than that, I didn't see a lot of difference. And that's probably just because of the thickness of the product more Absolutely. than anything else. But what I did try... Have I got it here? Let me have a little look. Bear with. I popped the embellishment mousse on with a spatula. Then I popped some glitter on top. So give it a little bit of a, I've left a little bit loose so that I can show you down here. Just rub the top of the glitter, pop it to the side here. And again, you get a different effect. So over this side, I haven't rubbed the glitter, but the rest of it I have. And it almost pushes it into the embellishment mousse yeah. and you get almost a foiled effect again. You do need to let the mousse dry a little bit before you start rubbing yes, the glitter. Yes, you do. Or you're going to move the mousse as well. Oh, heck yes. <laughs> yes. And I would press the glitter into the mousse a little bit as well. Yes. But I think you get a lovely effect. And again, it's something different to try with your product. It's a different look to the glimmer paste. It's Absolutely. not as... Please. No. Jagged again. I don't know how else to explain it other than the glitter is slightly flatter. It's not You can quite see the as... sheen coming across yeah. there. Just have a play. 
this is what we've been trying to, to get you to do for a while. We've enjoyed playing with mm -hmm. these, mind, haven't we? So the next one then, obviously that was the Indian gold then that was there. Then I had the crackle mousse. Now the crackle mousse I had was rose hip. So it's it's like a tomato -y red, mm -hmm. I would say. So this one was put on with a spatula. Maybe I need to come over to the side camera for this. So you can see all the cracks there. So this is what our crackle mousse does. It gives you that lovely it does. texture. It's slightly distressed finish, doesn't it? Don't do anything to it. Don't heat it. No. Don't do anything. Just let it dry naturally. Put it on, put it on the shelf. You may get some little bits that do crack off, but that is the nature of it. So if I bring this one in, the cracks are there. I'm hoping they're showing on the TV, but it's almost like a very fine china. It's that tiny little crack, like the hairline cracks on this. So if I bring that one in, you see the difference? Again, something to try. The other one looks like old leather. Yes, old it does. Yeah. It does, before you've uh, conditioned your yeah. leather. But that is very, very fine. So with the crackle mousse, even applying it with a spatula, the thicker you apply it, the bigger the cracks you're Absolutely. going to get. If you kind of really scrape with your spatula and kind of pull a lot of the product back off, you're just going to get a very fine crackle. Um, it's just a very fine... If you look in the centre there, you can see I've got a bit of a mm. lump of it and that's cracked a lot more. Yeah. You can layer it up as well. I think it looks quite nice if you put something underneath it and then put a thick layer of crackle mousse on top. Yeah. So you've then got something underneath through the cracks. I think that looks amazing. You can even ink on top of it okay. as well. Yeah. And then the ink will sit in the cracks. So you can layer from underneath, but you can also layer from on top yeah. as well. So that is our crackle mousse. Our glacier paste. Now this is the one I didn't expect. So this is our glacier paste and it is lightning bug. So this one I put on with a spatula and it's a very pale lime green. When I put it on with a sponge, obviously the colour is lighter again, but it looks like a cream. Mm. So different to that one. And again, you get a different shimmer. You do, so I think with this sponge it kind of makes the, so it kind of has mica flakes in your glacier paste. Yes, it does. Paste, and the sponge seems to make them sit flatter on the surface. Yes. Yeah. Whereas with the spatula it's kind of all more dispersed in with the colour and the base. Yeah, so you get more, you see more of the mica colour with the sponge and the paste colour with the spatula. Mm -hmm. So that's where you've got the two different colours from. Really pretty. And I'll show you that one now. So then we went on to have a little play. So we had chalk mousse. And using the same stencil, I popped this on a little bit of water mixed in with the chalk mousse and then painted through the stencil. I did exactly the same on white card. And you wouldn't think it was the same. No. You no, get a green lot. Looks so different, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You get a very different effect on the craft card. So play with your background colours mm -hmm. as well. Try it on black. Yes. If you've got mica in there, then the mica is going to pop on black. Then I used the chalk mousse on fabric. You're not going to be able to wash it, but if you're going to put it onto something, maybe a handbag or something on mm -hmm. a pocket, on a bag, or something that you're not going to be washing, maybe you're going to use it as a, a print on the wall. Very pretty. Again, have a play. And then this was another one. This again was the expanding mousse that I did again. And I had, this was with a sponge. And it seemed to pop a little bit more. I think I left one dry a little bit too long. And that was why I didn't have much puff mm -hmm. with it. But that was another one. And then we thought we'd have another little play then. So on this one, I popped Mother of Pearl. I'm hoping you can see it. Yeah, just. <laughs> yeah. I put Mother of Pearl mousse, embellishment mousse, and then I used a shimmer powder on top. 
so the shimmer powder kind of settled where the stencil was sitting just with little bits on top so it was a very subtle effect and I can't lilac like waterfall I think that was the the shimmer powder no, lilac brocade and no violet brocade lilac waterfall yeah. yeah I think that was lilac waterfall but very very subtle and then you did a little bit of spray in, didn't I you? I did. So this was using the Mica Mist. So with this one, I literally just spritzed straight through a stencil onto some cardstock. And then I actually lifted up the product that was left on the stencil onto a second piece of card to get kind of the negative, or positive and negative, whichever one is which. Um, but yeah, to get the, the remnants. And I love the kind of distress look on this and you still get hopefully you can see all of the sheen from the mica mist you do have mica in your mica mist so even when you're just picking up the remnants you do, do still get that and then obviously this one is just loaded so pretty with sparkle as well so pretty isn't it so we're going to show you how i was going to show you how she's done some of these techniques with the mousse so with a spatula and with a sponge so you can kind of see the two different application techniques and then I get to take over and do some spraying. So we've had to play with everything. We have. So I am using the Rose Garden stencil. So it's a pretty little stencil. Um, tape. I like to tape the stencil down. And I will tape from the top and the bottom. So these products are water-based, so obviously your card is going to get, not wet, but it's certainly going to absorb some of the it moisture, is. so it is going to warp slightly. So you can, even if you want to, tape your cardstock down to yes. your mat, depending on if you're going to be doing extra techniques with more water, you may yes. want to tape down on all sides, just to stop it from warping. If you're going to be adding shimmer powders and mm -hmm. sprays and different things. Right, let me just take the lid out. So this is the consistency. It's almost like a melted butter. You know when you're making cake and you've softened your butter, that's what this looks like. So start at the top and then just drag down. Try not to keep going over the same spot because the more you go over it, the more chance you've got of pushing it underneath the stencil but make sure you haven't missed any bits either. And also try not to leave too much product on your stencil. Absolutely, don't wanna waste it. Absolutely not. Let's have a little bit more. So we'll come down to the bottom. I've missed a bit there, so we'll, we don't wanna miss any bits. I want this one to be covered. It's another good reason to taper around your stencil if you don't want Absolutely. the product to go onto the rest of the cardstock. So if you say you are doing it just in a specific area. You can see, if I show you some of these, you can see where I've gone around the stencil and I hadn't taped all the way. So that is my glacier paste with a spatula. If I lift this up, take it off gently that is a really pretty i think i'm going to use it again with a yeah, sponge because okay. i think it's all right <laughs> if you've gone underneath it obviously you're going to need to wash it straight away but that is your glacier paste as you can see it's that pale limey green and you've got a lot of texture in here as well i think from the spatula absolutely so i don't know if you want to show it on number three i can because i like how um you can kind of see where the stencil has been laying and you've got those kind of defined crisp absolutely. edges absolutely there we are you can see is that it's so pale isn't it yeah but if it, i bring in the dry one maybe that will oh, that's the sponge so if I bring that one in, that is the dried version. You can kind of see the edges and the rays where the yeah. stencils kind of held the product. And the more you put on, the more that's going to be defined. Mm. So I'm going to pop that there to dry. So I've already got a little bit of glacier paste on my, on my stencil. So I'm going to make the most of that. 
and I'm going to use what's on my spatula. So this one now, I'm just going to pop a little bit on and just swirl it around. There's a couple of ways you can do this with a sponge. You can swirl it. You can or swirl you it. Can you can pounce. pounce it. Yeah, I was going to say. And you will get a different effect again. Absolutely. With both. I always find with the swirling that the mica kind of catches towards the edges. It does. Of the stencil. I'm not putting my fingers in the pot. So I'm taking a little bit of product out with my spatula, popping it on my sponge. So if I go this way, we'll pounce. And then the other side then, I'll give it a swirl. <laughs> Obviously then, oops. Decorate yourself. Absolutely. This does look really pretty on your nails actually. Mm. If you are a nail technician. Yes, it is water-based though, so you'd have to think about it carefully. You'd about have to seal it, wouldn't uh, it? Putting over it, yeah. So I'm gonna have a little bit more over here because I can see a lot of the mica, but I'm not seeing the color. So I'm going to pop a little bit more. There we go. One thing I would say with all of these, once you've used your stencil, once you're done with your session, yeah. clean it straight away. Yeah. All of these products, like I say, they are water-based. They will clean off nice and easily while they're still wet. Once they dry, however, not so easy to get no. off. No. <laughs> From not. experience, we all Absolutely. Uh, you know that. Absolutely. So if I lift that, this almost looks like mother of pearl to me as well. Mm. Right, I'm going to pop a baby wipe on top of my stencil just to keep it wet for now so that I can clean it when I get upstairs. So if I bring this in, let me get rid of that tape. Hopefully on the bottom, can you see the... Back a bit. Back to me. Yeah. Can you see a thicker on the bottom where I pounced it? And then on the top is quite thin. Is it showing? Yeah, move, move the There we go. Yeah. So I know as I tilt it, I can see the sheen on the TV. You see the mica shining? Yeah. It's a very subtle effect. You know, when you think about the wet, the one that I've dried here, the pounced one is a very similar colour to putting on with a spatula. Yeah. You just not get more of like a textured top to it, you don't do. you? You do. But not everyone is comfortable using a spatula. Because I struggle with a spatula, because I tend to push the product under the stencil, and I'm much more comfortable with a sponge. But you can get a good result there just by using a sponge with a thicker and a thinner coat. So that is our glacier paste. I've done exactly the same with all the other backgrounds that we showed you. They've all been put on with a sponge, as I've done there, or with a spatula. So it's definitely one to have a play with and one to have a go at. And with all of these then dried samples, these are the kind of things that we would recommend that you keep in, say, a binder. Absolutely. Or, you know, punch a hole in the corner and keep them on a ring. Write on them the colour that you've used, how you've applied it, if you've done anything extra to it. And it's kind of like your reference point it then is. to come back to. So if you want to repeat that technique again in the future, you can see the finish. You don't have to go and try it and then do it for the real thing. Yes. You've already got a trial one done. But any of these, as we showed with the aperture, you can pop any of these behind an aperture. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't just have to be like the entire background no. of your card. You can just use a small piece of it. So this is a card we're going to show you. So this is still a very clean, crisp card, but just with a messy background. And any of these will look pretty behind that aperture. I can't wait to see yours in the... Mm. Print them in our Facebook group, not print them. Post them, sorry, in our Facebook group so that you can share with everyone yep. how you've achieved your own backgrounds. Maybe you've got more ideas. Put them in the group, share them. 
The other one. Do you want to do a spray first? Sure, let's before do some, I do the end. Do some one. spritzing and then you can show us how you've made your lovely card. So. I have here my uh, own personal spray booth. This is uh, just an old box that we have laying around upstairs and as you can see it is um, fairly laden with all kinds of lovely shimmery things. Let me just uh, uh, remove the evidence of what we were testing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so um, an old kit box is perfect for this. It basically just helps to contain Absolutely. some of the, the spray, basically. You do need something like that just to keep it all in one place. You really you? do. So I have with me, I've got a couple of mica mist and I'm just going to give these a bit of a swirl. So very important before you use a mica mist, you do need to swirl it up. So you'll notice, you can probably see here, there's all the residue, all of the mica is at the bottom. So just very gently swirl that into the rest of the product. Don't shake it top to bottom because you'll shake it up the nozzle, which is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want a big blockage no, of the uh, mica in the nozzle if we can possibly avoid it. If you do have an issue with your sprays, we do sell new sprays. So yeah, you can buy new nozzles. The other thing that we do recommend is that as soon as you've used this, take the nozzle out and rinse it through with water to get any product out so it doesn't dry in there. So I use the blue one first. So that one is all now, you can hopefully see it's all mixed in. I don't yeah. have any clumps at the bottom. So I'm going to grab a slightly older scent. So I've got one of these lovely mandalas that I'm using. So I'm going to pop this in. Um, my trick with this, and this is just personal preference, whoops, didn't mean to knock That's that, so is that I prefer the kind of fallout from a spray rather than the direct spray. And I'll try and explain as I go how that works. So if I was to spray this directly, trying to make sure I don't spray anything I shouldn't while I'm here. So if I spray straight down onto this, you'll notice that you do get these kind of big splotches as well as the rest of it as well. And I don't always like that in my finished project. But that's the technique in itself. It isn't is. It? So I'm going to lift this up very carefully because I didn't tape mine down. Pop that there just for a moment. Grab this out, hopefully without touching too much of it. So there is my spritzed direct one. So like I said, you've got these kind of bigger splotchy bits where it kind of drips out of the nozzle as you're spraying. If you like that look, fantastic. Obviously I've still got product on here. So I'm going to very, very carefully hold this down onto one side and then just smooth it across all the way over. Pray that this was still damp enough for this to work. The magic reveal time. Yes. Beautiful. Here we go. And then you get your leftover residue. And I really like that effect. I think behind, say, you know, if I grab in one of your sentiments, a little sentiment over the front on a card, or even a background for a photo or yes. something, I think would be really lovely. So that's one way of spritzing. I like that. I like it a lot. I'm going to use these. I'm going to save them for uh, another project. I don't know what yet, but you may see it soon. <laughs> so if I pop my stencil with yours over here in the uh, to be cleaned pile. Absolutely. She'll bring the spray booth back in. Let's try a different one. Should we go with some hearts this time? Yes, why not? Why not? So I'm going to go for my kind of fallout technique this time. So stencil on, I'm going to pull this right towards the front of my spray booth. This time I'm going for a sparkle spray. So the difference between mica mist and sparkle spray. This one is a lot more, it's more liquidy, it's mm. more watery, I would say. And a thinner. bit more translucent, and, yeah. I would say. And not as sparkly. No. It has... It's got a sheen, but not yes, a sparkle. Exactly that. Whereas you can actually see like the defined little pieces of sparkle yes. from a sparkle spray. This is just like an overall sheen. Mm. Very subtle. Absolutely. Depending on the colour you use. I mean, we do have a really bright pink one that isn't quite so subtle. <laughs> but. So for my but we've got this also, this gorgeous oh, gold. Yeah. We'll we? show that in a second. So for my fallout technique, I want to aim my spray towards the back of my booth here. So it's just literally the fallout 
she says and hopes this works right and this is where it does get a little bit dangerous for everything that is around so I'm going to try and do this so you can see on camera right let's make sure the light is getting into there okay here goes wish me luck yeah I think we got it you probably will get yourself as well but you could also mix the colors couldn't you yes you could add a little bit of of each so if I lift this Hopefully you can see. It's Let's almost like an ombre see. as well. So I think we need to be roughly here, back a bit. There. Can you see it? No. Too subtle. It's still a little bit blurry. Say when. Hold on. Okay. Me, me shut the booth. <laughs> there. there. Yeah. Very, very subtle. It is very subtle. So you get more of just like a fine mist than the direct kind of splodgy look. And again, you know, it depends what you want for your project. If you want the really direct spray, if I try and put this back in, wish me luck. <laughs> uh, roughly there. I think perfect there. If I do a direct spray at the other end so you can kind of see the difference. Oh, I'm going to be twinkling this afternoon. <laughs> so hopefully all twinkling. you can see, so this is a, a really direct straight on spray and you can kind of see you do get clusters of the sparkle in there as well. Whereas this is just texture. a much, yes you can, it mm. is, I don't want to say lumpy but it, lumpy is what I mean, there are little bumps of yes. sparkle in there whereas this is a much subtler just all over but it's good sparkle. that you can get the two effects from from one spray one spray exactly and so many different colors in this absolutely as well. you so. could sponge that on though you can you can sponge with it you can paint with it i've done that a lot with a sparkle mm. spray because you do get that more concentrated color but all of that amazing sparkle one of the other things that we've done with it is mix it with some glycerin as well. Yes. So put a little bit of the sparkle spray onto your glass mat, a little drop of glycerin, mix yeah. the two, and you can sponge them onto backgrounds Absolutely. and things like that. And that looks really nice too. So lots of ways to mm. do that. But you can also layer these over other things, which is where I think they kind of come into their own. Let me um, add this to the washing up pile. Let me uh, put a fresh wipe over those too. Just contain that, and I'm going to uh, just de uh, de pink myself ever so slightly. It's not going to completely come off, but it's enough. So, if I bring in oh one of these, in fact, that's not the one I want. I want the non-puffed one, don't I? You could put it on either one; it doesn't matter. Is that it? Is that the one? Yes. Yeah. Let's go for that. Just grab so another. this is the one that's done with the sponge. sponge. That's it. So it hasn't puffed, but it doesn't have quite as much, say, sparkle or shimmer that perhaps you wanted. So why not layer things up a bit? Let's try and line up my stencil. That looks pretty. Mm, she says, <laughs> nudging it. Do you want some tape, or are you going to be nah. brave? <gasps> Look at you flying by the seat of your pants. Absolutely. It's how I roll. Absolutely. So. This time I've gone for a pearled ivory microwave, so I should actually have mentioned I used Nebula Blue for the first one. And this one is Pearled Blush Sparkle Spray. So we're now using Pearled Ivory Mica Mist. I love this one. Oh, me too. If, you, if you're thinking, oh gosh, I think shimmery sparkly stuff is not me, this is the one you need to try because it is so subtle but it's still there. Very pretty. So I'm going to go a bit heavier on one side than the other. For some reason that one is spraying completely differently than the blue. It's kind of giving more of a mist. But there yeah. we go. They all do it slightly differently. So if I just grab this You up. need to get to know your spray. You do. Save that. We'll pick that up in a second. So hopefully you can now see just a very subtle shimmer across the top, yes, yeah, it's there, good, you can even see like the little tonic studio is just down here from the <laughs> stencil as well, 
there's slightly more colour over this side whereas on this side it's just again a very subtle sheen that's happening but never be afraid to have a play definitely not this Part is where you learn okay grab my booth out of the way let's pick this up as well can we see this or do i need to move this again oh we're roughly in camera okay let's see if i can pick this up now this is going to be much more subtle than the blue one because obviously this is a much softer color but you never want to waste anything either So, oh, can that is we pretty. Just, just where the light hits it. If I try and tilt it, tell me when. There's a strip there, there yeah. yeah. So you can just see. This is definitely one to play with. Yeah. But this, like we say, you know, this particular mica mist is so subtle anyway. It doesn't have a huge amount of colour to it. Like, you know, it is ever so slightly mm. yellowy or creamy just in the center and that's about it but if you just want to give anything a very subtle kind of pearly mm. finish this is definitely the one to go for even spray in your classic cardstock mm. you'll get lovely. that lovely pearlescent effect on the top then you do absolutely so lots of uh different finishes with sprays as well let me just add that to the washing up there we go yeah, I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> despray. Despray, yes. Clean up. And this is definitely, you know, we've always said this get all of the messy stuff out in one go. Yeah. Have a play with it all and have then clean up. Have a day. Up. Or mm -hmm. Have an afternoon and see what you can create. And please, if you've come up with some new ideas, pop them on our Facebook page. Yeah, we'd love to see. Absolutely. But not just us. And you know how nosy we are. <laughs> but the other crafters like to see it. They we really like to do. see a new technique. We like to see somebody's learnt something new. And we all like to have a go then. So don't leave us out. Join us in. Okay, there we go. You should be uh, good to create now, okay? Well, thank you very much. You are welcome. So, I thought I would have a play with some shimmer powder. Now you know how much we love shimmer powder. I know. But I thought I would do something different with it. So I'm going to pop a little bit of tape just on the edge and tape this to my mat. There we are. So this is going to help to hold your cardstock down. It is going to hold my cardstock down. And stop it warping as well. Yes. Yes, when you are starting to add water, you uh, definitely need to think about holding the cardstock down a little bit more. Absolutely. And this could be part of your design as well, mine, because you could have a lovely little border going down mm -hmm. the edge. So I'm doing all four sides, because I can. There we are. So my first thing is, I'm going to take a little bit I have got Atlantis Burst Shimmer Powder. But again, what I would say is, have a look what you've got and try what you've got. It may be you're a kit subscriber and you've had some of these in your kit. I've got a little bit of water spray and I'm gonna mix the two together. I love doing this. It's so, the colors are gorgeous. Uh, is that dark enough? No, I think I might need a little bit more. I think I put too much water and not enough of my shimmer powder. But your shimmer powder goes a long, long way. Mm -hmm. There we are, that's better. Because I want to see some of the different colours. If you don't mix it all in, oh, look at that. This is the ocean to me. I love when you put this on thickly and it's kind of pooling. You can kind of see the shimmer you can. in it. It's you can. weird how different that looks on our monitor as well. It looks so pale up there compared to how it actually looks in real life. But we can go over it. We can always add a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just painting the whole sheet. So our shimmer powders have 
for the majority of them, a range of different pigments in them that split into different colours. They do. If you paint with them like this, you kind of mix them all into the base colour. Yes. It becomes one. But if you don't mix, I'm going to pop a little bit more. If you don't mix all the shimmer powder into the water, so some of this now hasn't dried as much. Mm, I think, no, it has mixed in. That it wasn't what I split. wanted. Yeah, I'm not getting any split at the moment, but we will. So you may think, oh gosh, that's a mess. And it's gonna get messier. It is. <laughs> so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of spray. And if you leave it at that, because it's a water-based product underneath the shimmer, the shimmer powder is a water-based product, it will take up, if I blotted that, I can pick up some of the base colour. So you could pick it up with something that was textured. Absolutely. And get that textured bubble wrap. Mm. Bubble wrap makes a lovely background. So I've sprayed all that and now I'm going to pop some shimmer powder on top. So whereas we normally put it onto a white background and you can see this is melting into the water already. Now I'm doing it on a coloured background. So I'm giving a little bit more of a spritz. Not too much because I want to keep some of these colours. Look at the split here. You've got the lovely blues, greens, yellows. So pretty. I like how it's moving as the water moves in the cloth yes. stock as well. Well, I'm going to heat dry this one now. So I'm going to get my heat tool. Oh, oh I need to switch it on Did I? the socket. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Half a jar, didn't I? So you can see as I'm blowing this now, it's moving it. And it may be that you want it to go in a certain direction. Then blow it in that direction. This is gorgeous. Obviously the more water you've got on you, the longer it's going to take to dry. I'm going to blow a little bit of that. If you think you've got too much water, then again, you can pick some of it up. There we go. If you want to add a little bit more, then you add a little bit more. But I want to make sure it's all perfectly dry. You can heat seal, you can seal this as well with um, a cheap hairspray, a, va a varnish spray, anything like that. Because it may be that you have little bits of shimmer powder that will come off. We're dry enough there. Let me just take my tape off. There we are. My water has seeped under my tape a bit. So I haven't got a nice crisp edge. But I think if you used something like um, a masking tape, mm -hmm. then you would have a better edge to it. I'm going to pop them straight in the bin. So that is the start of my background and I'm going to go back to the same stencil and I'm going to pop that over the edge there and I'm going to use a little bit of tape again. Let's get my tape that down. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to emboss it and I know you've seen me do this before but I think it is such a lovely technique. Mm -hmm. So I've got my green mat on the bottom 
I've got my rubber mat and then I've got my white plate on the top. So I'm just going to run this through the machine. bring that in. You can see I've got little bits that weren't quite dry so make sure you clean your plate off afterwards. Yes, don't run white card socks. No, definitely <laughs> not. So, did I tape that? Yeah, I taped that in. So I don't know whether you can see it. Yeah. Can you see the, the deboss yeah. there? Right, so the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring in a little bit of my gold. So again we're layering up. So I'll take a little bit, pop it on my mat. There we are, a little bit more. I can always add more but I can't put it back in my pot because there's risk of contamination. So I've got my sponge. Oh I didn't use a sponge did I? Right, let me show you what I found with this. I started with a sponge but I found I couldn't get to the edges of the stencil so I changed technique so I'm going to have a little bit more mousse pop a little bit more on the counter and I decided I was going to use a brush so this is one of our dinky little blender brushes and just swirl over the top. Because you've got all the bristles, they're going to go right up to the edge of your stencil. So if I lift that, can you see I've got such a different effect from mm -hmm. the sponge. It's kind of more polished, isn't it? Absolutely. Like as well. You've got more texture with the bristles. Yes. And it may be that's the technique you want. But I think it's nice to see different ways of applying as well. You're getting more of the colour underneath as well with the brush. Yes. Yes, you it's are. It's a lighter coating, isn't it? Yes, beautiful. Though. And you go as heavy or as light as you want. Maybe you only want to concentrate in certain areas. So I think I'm going to, oh, I want a little bit more over there, there's not quite enough there for me. But that's the beauty of just popping the tape on one end, you can use it as a hinge. I think I'm going to have a little bit more. Can need a new part of this right please Kim? I know. Look at my pot, my pot's emptying. Almost. Can you see the base? I know, that's not good. Go. So I'll pick it up with your brush, swirl it around. So you can go lighter in some areas, darker in others. And I think I'm happy with that. Thanks, lovely. It's pretty, isn't it? So let's take that off. And because you've embossed it, you've kind of got that slightly bubbled look to it already. Absolutely. And then the mousse is really bringing that out on the Absolutely. Top. So I'm going to take a scissors, <gasps> I'm going to chop the end off there because I want to use that for something else. Well indeed, it's a lovely bit of shimmer powdered cardstock. Don't want to waste that, no. do I? So I want to decide now which part do I want to use. I think I'm quite happy with that. Mm -hmm. Like the different colours you want to Absolutely, background. absolutely. So you need to trim this. So I am going to make a little mark. Have we got a pencil? So make a little mark where I want to cut that. So bring in the trimmer. This amuses me because before we start I said, do you need a trimmer? <laughs> oh no. No, I don't need a trimmer. And I do need a trimmer. Too so I was. You want to make this a little bit smaller than your card. So if 
I made down. Yes, that's a little bit smaller because you don't want it to interfere with the hinge at the back. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom. So we need that off there. That should be enough then to hide. And the reason I'm saying make it a little bit smaller is because I want to put another layer on the back. Sorry, I'm cut you now. <laughs> I'm going to put a layer of, white, of plain card on the back so that it keeps it all neat inside my card because you may well have bits of shimmer powder on the back here. It's actually quite clean for me. I oh know, I'm very surprised. <laughs> but again, it's all about hiding your workings. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And this piece, I think, with the loft cut is nice. So we'll, uh, Absolutely. Save that one as well. Bookmark. Oh, yes. Nice bookmark. So let's stick these in place. We'll have a little bit of glue. It may well be that this is still a little bit damp, mind. So make sure you've got plenty of glue around your aperture and then up to the edges. So I've just used one of our circle dies to cut this. There we go. To pop that in. Ooh, I need to do a little bit more. I can see a little bit creeping out at the bottom. But that's okay. I can use my scissors and just run it along the edge. That's better. It makes me twitch when you use scissors upside down. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't even know why I do it. <laughs> so there is the front of my card. So inside then, we're going to pop the layer. Hiding. Hiding. Hide your workings. There we go. And the reason why I had a little bit hanging over was because I hadn't moved it all the way to the top. Oh, that'll be it. That'll be it. Obviously, if you wanted to keep more of the piece that you've coloured and decorated, you could cut your aperture or your background You can piece cut this a little smaller. bit bigger. Yeah. You just a little bit bigger than your aperture. And then again, hide it behind your piece of white card. So that's the start of our card. So what else was I going to do then with my little bit of cardstock? I have a die here somewhere. So I have our thank you die. So it's quite a large die. So it's a little bit of a statement piece. And again, I'm going to tape it down and I'm going to cut this out. So again, decide before you cut it, which bits of this do you like the best? Do you want more of the swirly effect down here? Do you want more of the plain effect? And I think I want a bit more of that. So let's just pop it on my cutting plate. And under the trimmer. Yes, it is. <laughs> now, I love how this is devolving into how your desk looks upstairs it does look as well. Like my desk. Yeah, you might notice there's like a little tiny square of free space to work in here which is roughly what our works with upstairs as well. You've been very cheeky now. I am. You've been very honest, but you've been very cheeky. It's funny because I took a photo of it last week where I was literally crafting in a space about this big on her desk. Well, what can I say? Oh, I know what I've forgotten to bring down. Oh, do we have one here? Yes. Oh, do we mind? It was on my desk as well. I think I used it for something else. So, there's my die cut. Let's do a little bit of pokeying out. Because this card is still a little bit damp, some of your die cut pieces may stay. Oh, that's a knife. I don't want that. <laughs> Please be careful. Not what I want. Oh, there's a pokey. Because someone had it. There's a carrot. There it she's is. She's got like five. She yeah, has got five. She has. She's been collecting them upstairs. Oh, I'm going to run damp. this through. It's because it's damp and it hasn't yeah. cut properly. So I'm going to run this through again. Quickly. Pop it on the edge, maybe. Yeah. 
There we go. And I'm taking everything else with me. <laughs> As you do. As you do. I'm not a neat freak, I just like things to be tidy. <laughs> I know, you go frantic on my desk, don't you? I just don't go around the wrap, it's easier. I know, Gareth says the same. There we are. So that is all cut now. Do you know your can't suck dry? Yeah, it's Be a little kind. bit damp. I know, we keep saying this, don't we? Be kind to your cardstock. So I'm going to take a little bit of card here and pop it underneath. So there's my thank you. So I've got little areas where there's more shimmer powder but I'm going to use a clear mark ink pad and I'm just going to dab on top there we are oh, you're doing that way okay there we are that turn works. that over and I've got a clear embossing powder So I'll sprinkle it all over, pick it up gently. Don't sneeze. Oh, please don't sneeze. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Move everything out to the way. And then just heat it. And all these colours will have the most beautiful sheen on them. Make sure you don't overheat your embossing powder because it goes quite dull. And you lose that lovely sheen. There we are. Make sure I've got the end there. So have a little check. Make sure you've melted everything. I think I have. If you're quick enough, you can just pour over more, more embossing powder. I'm never quick enough. No, me either. So I usually put another little bit of embossing powder on top. Bring your card back in. And pop some more powder on top. I think this time I may have to put my powder back in the, in the pot. There we are. So you're just sort of building up layers. I'm building up layers because I want to get a lovely sheen on you. And it gives you almost like a 3D effect, doesn't it? It does. I always think of it as a tile. You know that sheen you get yes. on a tile? And the kind of rounded edges as well. Yeah. Yeah, because the powder goes around the edges and melts, doesn't it? It does. So, heat it up again. And you can do this as many times as you want. I think I'm going to do it three. There we are. Now, be careful when you're picking it up because it is hot. Make sure you've not got any powder areas. And then pop it back on to your pad. So I have seen people just have it like laying down and they heat it and then put Pour the gun away, quickly. sprinkle and heat it. I'm, like, I I'm not, I couldn't do that. I'm not good enough for that. No, I'm not fast enough. No, no me. And then I find that I get areas that are, I've got lots of powder, some have got none. Yeah. It's not for me, Chief. No. Okay, so make sure you've got powder everywhere. Pop the edges in. And the separate layers will kind of all fuse together as you heat yes. the next one, so you don't have to worry about it just coming off with the clear mark or anything. No. Yeah. I love this effect. I don't do it enough, though. 
can wear it on. And you can do this with coloured embossing powder as well. I've heated it all yeah so I'm hoping if I bring this over here can you see that sheen on it it does look like a really nice Moroccan pie. it does it does so let's pop my lids on I'm gonna pop this back in oh yes let's do that because otherwise I'm going to end up with powder everywhere and that's not the effect I'm looking for. There we go. Right, so where did I pop my card now? There's for you. There it is. So if I pop that on top there, it's lost. All that hard work we've done mm -hmm. and it's lost. So I cut two extra thank yous just in white. Oops, a little bit tangly. So I'm going to glue one so it's got a little border at the top and I'm going to glue another so it's got a little border at the bottom and that will make it pop against that background. Now the technical term for this is an uppy downy. Yes, absolutely it is. <laughs> You're actually giving a drop shadow. There we are. So I'm going to use our precision nozzle because it's a little bit on the fine side. Are these back in again, Cam? Do we have this again? Shall check now. Because I know a lot of people have been waiting for I precision know. nozzles to come back. Oh, they they make life so easy. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've got fine die cuts. Go. The other way around this, if you didn't want to try and dab glue onto everything, is for your two white pieces, you could cut them with your double-sided adhesive yes, on you both could. sides. You could. Um, so that you could stick one then to your embossed piece. Yeah. And one to the other. I don't mind popping a bit of glue on that. So take that one up to the way. The precision, uh, precision nozzles are not in stock yet. Oh. oh, they won't be long. Fingers crossed that's not too long then. I have been given a sheet with hopefully dates. <gasps> oh, exciting. We'll all be pestering you for dates now, Cam. So because it's a little bit of a bendy sentiment, it does move, so you have to line it up as you go across. So what I'm trying to do is to get the same amount of white all the way across. So there we've got a little bit of a top border and I'm going to do exactly the same, move that across a little bit, I'm going to do exactly the same on the bottom. So another little bit of glue and again I'm just dotting it all over and that is enough to glue it in place. If you are looking for these go on to the website and click notify me. Mm. And as soon as they come back into stock, you will have a little email to say, they're here. And you can pop them into your basket. So go from the bottom this time. A little bit of a border. I don't want too much because if you put too much, it kind of distorts your word. And that's not the effect I'm looking for. There we are, bring the U in. So I've kind of got a little bit of a highlight and a shadow, but they're both in white. And then when I pop that on there, can you see the difference that makes? Just by having that little bit of white behind it, you can see exactly where your words start and finish. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to glue this in place. It's a great technique for word sentiment. Absolutely. 
absolutely you can even do it with finer materials so like a vellum is always nice yes. if you've got a dark background a vellum shadow or highlight absolutely. i guess it would be then wouldn't it um looks nice as well oh it does it does or even a little bit of gold mm. always love a little bit of gold So there we are, I've gone at a jaunty angle. It's very unlike you. I know, I don't tend to do jaunty angles, do I? And then to finish it off then, I'm gonna add a couple of crystal drops and this is mustard gold. So I'm gonna pop a bigger one in the middle and then I'm gonna go smaller. And rather than trying to work backwards, Flip your work around and then add your drops. Gorgeous. So you're doing the same angle twice then rather than trying to go in a different angle. And there is my finished card. So hopefully we've given you some food for thought, mm. something to try. Think of layering up your different mediums because you could do this with two different mousses. Yep. You could have a little bit of the um, expanding mousse with a different colour embellishment mousse over the top. Um, you could even offset a couple of different stencils. If you've got a very yes, you open could. stencil, you could put into the background and then a yes. finer detail one over the top if you've Absolutely. got other stencils that you want to use. Or just offset them slightly. Or offset them, yeah. Works better with um, a bigger pattern, a more open pattern, I think, than say one of like the fine mandalas. Yes. Because that would just look a, a bit messy, I think, if yeah. you offset those. The half one you could do it with, though, couldn't you? You definitely could. Because if I bring this in, there we are. We're still a little bit messy here, but we can live with that. So you could move so the next heart is in the centre here. Mm -hmm. You could definitely do that, or just move it about half half a centimeter quarter yeah. of a centimeter even and if you're using different colors or different absolutely. effects or different finishes yeah it's going to give you a really nice finish i think on that absolutely it is so and you're going to test now that we've said that i know <laughs> and you're going to have lots of fun with it definitely so hopefully this has, um, as I said, kind of sparked your inspiration. If it has and you have a go at making some messy backgrounds, please do tag us in what you're making. You can either post in our official Tonic Studios Facebook group um, or across social media. We are at Tonic Studios basically everywhere. And you can use the hashtag <laughs> show tonic to show us what you've been making. Um, if you have had any questions as we've been going along or you want to share Pop some of your techniques, below. yeah, put them into the comments. Let us know. We can read them. We'll come back yes. and answer any questions that you've got as well. If you've enjoyed this, please do give the video a thumbs up. Yes. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that notification bell. Ding! So you'll be notified every time that we post new content. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you all again very soon. Happy, Happy crafting! crafting.